Hey kids, it's the Best and Flyer here, hope you're well. Out and about on this absolutely beautiful winter's day today on a bike that I have genuinely been after riding for absolutely ages since this one was launched. This is the incredible Ducati Multistrada V4S. An absolutely beautiful looking bike. It's had rave reviews and I'm a little bit late to the party to have a go on it to be honest, but uh, I think it's going to be well worth the wait. I've only been riding this for 10 minutes so far <laughs> and already I'm thinking this is a stonking machine. Anyway, if you're interested in the big V4S, stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think. Alright, so here I am on uh, Ducati's latest, most sophisticated, most expensive adventure bike. It's also, I think, the most powerful adventure bike you can buy, putting out 170 brake horsepower. All right, let's take a look at this beast then. What an absolute beautiful bike, eh? Here she is, the Multistrada V4S. This is the one, this one's got absolutely everything on it. It's got all the packs you can have. This one uh, is obviously the press bike and it's uh, around about 24 grand's worth. This has got all the touring packs and everything else on it. So uh, this is a Spectre Multistrada as you can get it. Anyway, let's start up at the front. Uh, here we can see this new uh, front end with the uh, with the radar uh, device in there, of which more later, I'm sure. Uh, lovely headlights with cornering headlights on this one as well. Um, here we can see this one's got the uh, the lovely uh, carbon um, bits of bling on here. They're, well, mud guard is what we normally call it. Very nice indeed. Uh, down here we can see some new design with the air scoops here, which sort of bring the air away from the rider. Uh, and then we've got these little sort of winglet things down here that actually bring air up towards the rider, which is very, very clever. Uh, underneath the front, uh, we've got an oil cooler in there, and then we've got the two radiators either side. Um, and uh, down here looks all lovely and clean now, but you can imagine this area could get quite spattered with mud once you get going, couldn't you? Here's that uh, engine, looks absolutely lovely. I love the um, that sort of uh, covering they've got on there, that gold colour looks really nice. Uh, nice bit of red subframery going on. This one's got fitted with the panniers as well. I have been putting my stuff in the panniers and I have to say I find them a little bit fiddly to use. Um, but a beautiful, beautiful looking bike. It's got this little cubby hole here to put your phone in. I have an iPhone uh, 13 Max Pro. It won't fit in there, so uh, look out for that being a change on another bike, uh, and, you know, a future iteration of the bike. But yeah, a lovely, lovely looking thing, isn't it? I think you'd agree. I think probably the best looking adventure bike that you could buy, particularly in the sunshine here at, uh, at Silverstone, the home of British motor racing. Anyway, enough of that, uh, back on the bike anyway. The Multistrada has always been a bike that uh, people have said, you know, if you love your sports bikes, but you want to go sensible and get yourself an adventure bike, then the Multistrada is the one to go for because it's a pokey machine. Well, I have to say, when you jump on this and pull away, I, it doesn't feel very pokey at the moment. I mean, I'm just poodling along here, 58 miles an hour in fifth gear and it feels a bit gutless at this speed. Now don't get me wrong, I know you're gonna be shocked at that because the bike does get a trot on when you want it to. But compared to, and there's gonna be a lot of comparisons with the GS on this review, it doesn't feel anywhere near as grunty at low speeds. Now I'm in quite a good position to uh, compare this to the GS course because I'm a GS fanboy and uh, I'm just riding back home from Silverstone now having picked this up from Ducati UK. Uh, and I rode up on my GS. I literally just jumped off that and jumped on this. So it's a great comparison. Let's start with comfort. What's the seat feel like, for example? The seat on here, it's actually quite hard, but it's not uncomfortable. It's nice and wide. You've got plenty of space. You can move around on it. Um, it's, you know, physically quite a large bike. So no matter how big you are, I think you're going to find it comfortable. The seat on here is adjustable, I've got it on its lowest setting at the moment and I'm a relatively short fellow, I don't find it too tall this bike now, whereas the last Multistrada I rode was the 1260 Enduro, absolutely loved that bike, but boy, it wasn't half tall, I probably couldn't live with that because it was too tall, but this one I could live with, it's not too tall. Riding position itself is very familiar feeling, in fact, having just jumped off my GS, I'd say the riding position is identical to the GS. My legs are at a slightly acute angle, nothing too sporty. I'm sat pretty much upright, maybe a slight bend forward, but not much. Very, very comfortable place to be. The bike sounds completely different to what I was expecting. It almost sounds a bit wimpy again. I, I don't mean to sound disparaging, because once you wind these V4s up, they sound epic. But at these sort of normal road riding speeds, it's almost a bit tinny. Let's come down a cog and wind her a bit. My God, <laughs> she doesn't half go when you want her to. 
Yeah, she's still the bike for sports bike fans, no doubt about that. Crikey, drop her down a cob, cog and wind her on. You can feel all that 170 brake horsepower, no problem at all. So where were we? Comfort, yeah. Windscreen on here seems, well, I've got quite a little, lot of wind on the top of my helmet. So I think it would uh, benefit from one of those MRA Vario screen add-on spoiler things, like again, like I have on my GS, just to keep the wind off the top. What I do love about this screen is this adjustment here. Very easy to do, one-handed, while you're on the move. In the lower position, you get to look properly over the screen. It's nice, but I am properly in the airflow, so I'll keep it in its upper position and then I'm just getting clipped on the top of the head by the airflow. Handlebars are nice and wide, feel to me, the same as the GS in terms of my hand placement. So yeah, comfort wise, 10 out of 10, top notch, as comfortable as you like this, as you'd expect. Right, there's nothing behind me, let me just try the brakes out on this, it's got epic brakes on here. Wow, they feel good. Not too much fork dive actually, let's just give that front brake a try again. It does dive a little bit, of course, again, compared to the GS with its... The GS with its telelever front end doesn't dive at all. But this isn't... It doesn't feel like it's out of control. When you pull those brakes on... Actually, they're, they're quite nice. They're quite, sort of, I describe as progressive. They're not grabby like you might expect brakes of that calibre to be. But they're very, very good. Let me just try the rear brake. Yeah, the rear brake is fine. Nothing to write home about, but it's absolutely fine. Handling on this is beautiful. To me it feels lighter than the GS in the turns, in fact it feels lighter than the GS when you're riding it all the time. Even though it is actually quite a heavy bike. There might be a chance to overtake this here. Aha, ah, it's turning off, perfect. Okay, let's not go mad, it has got anti-wheelie but uh, here we go. Now she sounds good, I can feel the front end going light but the anti-wheelie is keeping her pretty well planted. Yeah, quite a lot of wind noise at high speeds and wind around my shoulders, so I think uh, maybe an aftermarket windscreen is in order. It's not too bad, it's fairly clean airflow. Boy, yeah, what a bike. Let's just turn her down a cog or two. Well, yeah, this is one performance bike, I can tell you. Yeah, it's lost none of its sporty characteristic. <laughs> and then when you come out of it, stay, thank you, when you come out of the fast bits and you're back on a 30 mile an hour road, it behaves itself beautifully. Look, I'm in third gear, 28 miles an hour, no thumpiness on the old Multistrada. It would have felt like you're on a pneumatic drill. Just as I come through the lovely little town of Buckingham here, great chance just to see what it's like through town. And again, I'm expecting great things because the fueling on it feels absolutely beautiful. Really, really smooth this engine actually. Yeah, it feels as smooth as you'd expect a four cylinder to, but it's got a bit more of that twin character with the sound. The way they've uh, got the firing order of the power pulses on here, it feels like a twin but has the smoothness of a four. One thing I have found with this is the indicator button. I found it's a little bit small. Tiny point and it is a niggle, but getting at that is a bit of a problem. Lovely to see the switch gear is lit by the way. Talking of the switch gear, it's got a lovely quality feel about it. And it seems to make quite a lot of sense the way it operates as well. The TFT on here is beautiful. And it's completely clear and it's got everything on there you need, including a fuel gauge, thank goodness. And it's beautifully clear. It's got a couple of uh, menus on it. One at the top left and one at the bottom right. And you control those using this little gear, not the gear stick, joystick down here on the uh, left handlebar that you can see sort of lit up around it with red. Quite easy to use. You sort of hold it up to go to the top menu and then you can flop flip through the options there, hold it down to go through the bottom menu, flip through the options there.
This bike has got a ridiculous amount of technology on it. You name the current bit of tech and this has got it. Including, of course, that uh, radar cruise control. Which I used on the uh, BMW RT when I rode that a few months ago. And I have to say, very impressed with it. I think it's probably the same system. I think it's Bosch that makes it. And these manufacturers, KTM, also have it on some of their bikes. All use that same system. But what this gains on the Ducati that you don't have on the others is this mirror blind spot detection system which I just think is brilliant I'm not a massive fan of electronics so I can live without them to be honest I like analogue bikes but when it's safety related I think it's a great thing so stuff like ABS traction control and now this blind spot alerting it's just great I mean cars I've driven with that on I just, it's just saved me a number of times and I'm sure it'll be the same on the bike so let's hope over time things like this blind spot mirror detection system thing becomes a standard feature on bikes just as we've come to expect things like ABS and traction now. Been in the car world for ages, nice to see bikes catching up. Doesn't feel at all ponderous when you put your feet down, doesn't feel like you're going to drop it like old Multistradas did to me at least. Through that bit of town there, no drama, no hassle. Lovely bike. So of course in my mind, during the period that I've got this bike, I'm thinking I need to decide whether my next adventure bike is going to be another GS, because mine is now eight years old, or do I go Multistrada? Which was, frankly, was the choice I had before when I bought my GS. It was between the two bikes, but I went GS mostly because it carried its weight lower and I found it easier to live with. Whereas this now seems like it's, it's fixed that problem. So it's down to what do you like the look of? One thing I would miss on the, that the GS has, it has the sat-nav mounted up here. I would miss that on here. This does have an integrated system that allows you to hook your phone up to this amazing TFT. And it does give you a map up, that gives you, but it gives you a proper map. It's not just turn-by-turn -turn arrows. So I think the system on here is quite nice. It's quite complicated to set up though. I haven't had the chance to do it yet. But if you're going to have those integrated phone systems, then this seems to be the one to have. And hopefully you can keep your phone in this little cubby hole here, which does have a USB port in, so you can keep your phone nice and charged. Because those systems do tend to drain your battery on your phone. You're out of luck if you buy this bike and you've got an iPhone 13 Max Pro though, like I have, because it won't fit in the cubby hole. So you have to put it in your pocket and accept that the battery might drain a bit quick. Suspension on here feels beautiful. This Skyhook system, you don't hear much about it these days, do we? It came out with a lot of fanfare a few years back. First on the Multistrada, and it's their sort of semi-active system, and it works really nicely. Again, I'm just thinking how my uh, GS felt as I rode up this road an hour ago. And if anything, this feels nicer in terms of the suspension. Just adjust that mirror slightly. And talking of the mirrors, really like this design on here. I like they've just not chucked a stalk on and a mirror on. It's a nice bit of uh, thought has gone into the design of that. I personally like the look of those. They work very well as well. A little bit of um, vibration in them I've noticed. So it does blur the view a little bit at a certain RPM, but certainly not enough to put you off the bike. And, and looking at it now as I'm going through this town again slowly at 30, look, perfectly clear view. They work really well. So the mirrors are good. This heated seat is lovely, by the way. The only criticism I have of the heated seat is you have to go through the menus using that little joystick to get it turned on good news is it does remember that you had the seat turned on though so if you turn the bike off and then back on again it remembers the seconds heat the seat was in it doesn't remember what the grips was in though and the grip is a bizarre setup you've got a button for the grips and then you have to go into the menus after that and select what level you want the grips on so that's a bit strange well it's so nice to be out on the road on a lovely day it's about uh, seven degrees, oh it's saying ten degrees actually out now. This is the warmest <laughs> I've been on a bike for ages. It's lovely. Clutch on here feels relatively light. Of course you don't have to use it that much because it's got uh, Ducati's brilliant quick shifter on here which even at low speeds works really nicely. Way better than the one on the GS. One of the big criticisms of the GS for me always is the gearbox which is clunky at best although it's got better over the years gearbox in here no such issue up and down smooth as you like the only thing I would say about the gearbox on here is an absolute bugger to find neutral I've stopped this bike 
for various reasons since I've been on it three or four times and each time I've had difficulty finding neutral. I don't know if it's because it's a new bike and it needs a bit of wearing in so to speak or whether that's just a feature of these bikes but yeah finding neutral is a bummer. That's one of those things actually with the bike that becomes annoying over time isn't it? Anyway enough chat on the bike let me talk you through the spec. Okay, let's uh, talk about the spec then on this absolutely gorgeous looking machine. Uh, let's start with the, the power plant, the engine here. Looks absolutely brilliant in this powder coated form, I think. Uh, this is the 1158cc V4 Gran Turismo engine. Uh, it's got its uh, roots, of course, in the engine that's in the Panigale and the Street Fighter as well, uh, it being the V4. This is tuned slightly differently for uh, more road use, which makes, of course, sense. It's got a little bit better mid range uh, than the Street Fighter and the Panigale. Uh, and uh, curiously, this is actually a smaller, even though it's a V4, it's physically smaller than the V2 that it replaces. So it's a allowed Ducati to get the weight a bit lower on the bike, make it a little bit less top heavy, which is a great thing as far as I'm concerned. In terms of the numbers, 170 brake horsepower, incredible, at 10,500 RPM, 125 newton metres of torque at 8,750, so bags of power there. The most uh, powerful uh, adventure bike you can get, in fact, I think, so uh, it still keeps those uh, sports bike fans happy in, in terms of the numbers. Uh, let's have a look at the brakes on the front here. You've got these incredible Brembo star lemurs. Uh, these are proper, proper brakes, it has to be said. They're on uh, four pot calipers uh, and they are three, two, three, thirty mil discs. And this front wheel now is a 19 inch front wheel, not a 17 inch, which the previous uh, Multistrada was. Makes it uh, much more off roady, if you like. Uh, not that I think anyone in their right mind is necessarily going to go off road on this. Uh, with a smaller wheel, of course, theoretically it'd have better turn in and a bit more sporty characteristics, but this makes it gives the Multistrada more of a multi-strata feel as in uh, many roads uh, because you could theoretically take this off road but again I certainly wouldn't if I spent the money on this. Alright down at the back end here uh, we've got again a Brembo caliper looks like a little dinky four pot on there actually uh, and that's on a 265 mil disc. Let's have a look. Uh, no it's two pots but uh, yeah cool looks good and you've got a double sided swing arm on here and this one also has got the Acura exhaust but you can't quite see it because it's behind the panniers which are an optional extra and uh, I actually as I mentioned before when I showed you the bike at the start of the video I find a bit of a pain to use with the way that the clips work on that. Anyway uh, what else to say suspension on the front 50 mil fully adjustable uh, front fork with skyhook electronic compression rebound damping on there uh, so clever stuff on the rear fully adjustable monoshock uh, if we can go around and see it can we actually see it through this camera on this side uh, and that again is with the clever skyhook uh, electronic um, bits and bobs in there so uh, yeah it, it just it just feels great anyway uh, what else to tell you seat height on here is adjustable between 840 mil and 860 I've got this on its lowest setting and it still feels quite tall to me but it doesn't feel unwieldy weight wise so um, for me I'm five foot eight with a sort of medium sized leg and um, I actually find this doesn't feel too you know, too much like I'm going to drop it. Uh, weight of the bike, 243 kilogram curb weight, um, which sounds heavy, and I suppose it is, but that of course is curb weight, so that includes fuel. Tank capacity on here, 22 litres, which I suppose is middling for this sort of bike. Expect around 170 miles uh, range from it. Electronics on here, well we could go on forever. It's got this amazing TFT on here now. Uh, let me see if I can just bring it to life to show you the sort of start-up routine. If it's not too sunny to do that. It looks great when it gets going. Here we go. Uh, on this bike, this is now six and a half inch TFT screen, and it's laden with electronics. This has got uh, riding modes, power modes, cornering ABS, traction control, wheelie control, radar, cruise control, uh, blind spot detection, integrated navigation system, smartphone mirroring, whatever that is, vehicle hold control, cornering lights, quick shifter, heater grips, basically, you name it, it's got absolutely everything. But I'm not a massive fan of electronics, but when it comes to electronics, I do like stuff that help out with safety. And on this thing, you've got this uh, blind spot detection system, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So looking forward to using that a bit more. Alrighty, I think I've covered the main um, points. The V4S, which this is, is 19K as standard. That's before you start adding all the bits that you actually want. Uh, the, just the standard V4 is 16,200. The VS4, V4S Sport, 23 grand. Or we can go whole hog, get the Pikes Peak. That will set you back 24 and a half grand. So very expensive bike. Or something else well worth mentioning are the service intervals on here. 9,000 miles uh, or two years. So even if you don't do the 9,000 uh, miles, you can ride it for two years and you're still within 
the warranty period you don't mess up uh, you know your guarantees and all that stuff so that's an excellent thing anyway absolutely beautiful but I think she looks stonking uh, and I'm desperate to ride her some more so uh, yeah let's get back on the bike okay so there we have it that's uh, basically my first ride on the multi on the mighty Multistrada V4S what an amazing bike I'm blown away by it so far it's uh, it's a lovely bike I can't really find anything I don't like about it except for some little oddities about turning on the heated grips and seat going through menus that sort of thing finding neutrals awkward but these are small niggles overall the bike is beautiful it's got loads of power it handles lovely it feels light it's so agile it's amazing you can just chuck this thing around I think if I was in the market for an adventure bike now it would be a very very difficult choice and at the moment I'm thinking I'll probably take this over a GS a lot of money though but uh, yeah a lot of bike as well anyway I hope you enjoyed that if you've not uh, been to my channel before do consider hitting that subscribe button it'd be great to have you along I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden Flyer but I do all sorts of things about motorcycles stuff in my garage about how to look after the bike trips and tours at home and abroad monthly bike news anything and everything I'll try and cover it here on the channel it'd be great to have you along I've got this bike now for the next week or so I will definitely be making a few more videos on this bike so if you're interested in the Multistrada stick around and stay tuned more videos coming soon thanks for watching this time thanks as ever to my uh, patrons and my members without whom this whole thing wouldn't be possible and thanks to you for watching once again do leave your comments below love reading those and I'll uh, respond to as many as I can right that's it for now until next time this has been the Mist and Fly Cheerio